In a previous video, I pointed out that a number of Egyptian names, kings, gods and others, come to us from Greek writers, who, when writing the Afroasiatic Egyptian words with their Indo-European alphabet, made a few approximations. Actually, I said they made a hash of it, which isn't untrue. Even so, we owe these Greek scribes a lot when it comes to our understanding of the Egyptian language. Not only was Greek one of the keys to transliterating the hieroglyphs, but it's built a more subtle bridge between the Egyptian language and modern English. A great many Greek words entered the Latin vocabulary as their cultures mingled. In time, Latin's many children would include the Norman French, which insisted its way into England after 1066. Oh look, another surprise cameo from William the Conqueror. I promise he isn't haunting me. Please don't urgently send for an exorcist. <clears throat> Uh, among those Greek words which filtered their way into the British Isles were plenty that the Greeks adapted from Egyptian words. That's not the only route from Egyptian to English, as I'm about to show, and the list I'm giving isn't exhaustive. I'm not generally including Egyptian proper nouns. Obviously there's a sense in which Osiris is a word we know that we got from Egyptian, but it has no meaning beyond what the Egyptians would have used it for. Also, since it turns out there are quite a few words in English that we ultimately get from Egyptian, I've split this into a few shorter videos. This is part one, animal and vegetable. Let's get to the list. The herb anise gets its name from the Greek anison, which seems to come from the Egyptian anise. Whether this refers to the same plant we call anise, I'm not sure. Another possibility is that it refers to the herb we now call dill. If you're building a piano, or have recently discovered that you're a gothic vampire witch and need a new name, look no further than ebony. The Greeks gave us the word ebenos, which they themselves borrowed from the Egyptian word, which might have been hebne or hubni, or something similar. I say similar because, as we'll discover in a future video, the Egyptians didn't always write down what we would call vowels. The Egyptians also gave us our word for gum, not this stuff but this stuff. Via the Greek komi, our term for a rubbery, sticky or sap-like substance comes from the Egyptian kumit or komit, which referred to sacred oils taken from acanthus resin. I've got a joke for you. What did the cheese say to itself? I got my name from Egyptian! Yes, that squeaky and oh-so-grillable cheese halloumi gets its name not just from Egyptian Arabic halloum, but ultimately from the Demotic word, probably pronounced almost identically, which seems to have referred simply to cheese. Though rightfully illegal to produce now, ivory has historically been a much sought-after material. We get the word from the Latin ebur, which comes from the Egyptian yuba which referred not only to ivory, but also elephants, and the place the Greeks called Elephantini, which sounds like a gigantic cocktail, but is actually an island shaped like an elephant's tusk. The Egyptian word is preserved not only in the Latin ebur, but in the Hebrew and Coptic names for that very same island, yev in Hebrew, yeb in Coptic. Here's a word that will come up twice in this video, Lily. To get from the English lily all the way back to its Egyptian origins, you have to bear in mind that l and r are often interchangeable between languages or even dialects in the same language. For example, in Latin, this flower is called lilia, but in Greek, lirion. The Greeks got it from the Coptic, where in different dialects of Coptic, it exists both as hleri and hreri. Its ultimate origin seems to be harurat. So, while you might look at this transliteration from Egyptian and think that it has nothing whatsoever in common with the English word lily, eventually you can see how the transition from one to the other does become clear. This next one is a bit frustrating. Some of the etymologies in this and later videos will be well documented but spurious. This is the other way around, in that it seems the word must come from Egyptian, but there's no direct linguistic evidence. Paper seems pretty clearly to come ultimately from papyrus, which in Greek is papyrus. The problem is I don't know where Greek got it. There are two Greek words for the product of the same plant, bublos, which is named after the Phoenician city of the same name, and papyrus, which, like biblos, seems to be a loan word, but 
we're not sure where from. None of the Egyptian words we know for the papyrus plant and its products, warich, chauf, and jat, seem to bear the slightest resemblance to papyrus. Its use as a writing material was an Egyptian innovation, and we know that the Greeks credited the Egyptians with the invention of, well, most things, so it seems like papyrus ought to be a loan word from Egyptian. But if it is, we haven't found its origin yet. Speaking of the Phoenicians, the mighty phoenix, which dies upon a pyre and is reborn from its own ashes, has a contested Egyptian origin. It's difficult to deny the alternative etymology, which is that it may come from the same origin as the Phoenician civilization, but the Egyptian etymology has it that the phoenix, poinix in Greek, is derived from the Egyptian word boinu, which seems to have referred to the grey heron. Our last entry for this video is particularly relevant for you if you are or know a Susan or a Susanna or a Shoshana. Admittedly, you are an animal rather than a plant, but you might know that your name comes from the Hebrew word for either lily or rose. I said lilies would be back. But the Hebrew word actually has its origins in the Egyptian word shorshan, which referred specifically to the water lily. That's it for the first part of my Egyptian words series. Did I miss any animal or vegetable words you think came from Egyptian? Let me know in the comments. And as always, life, health, and prosperity to you all. Thanks for watching. Head over to my channel for more, or click here to see what the algorithm thinks you should watch next. I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you'd like to support and collaborate on the channel directly, head over to patreon.com slash armchairegypt. You can also join my Discord community, there's an invite link in the description.